Hello everyone, Sigler here, Bork, Chef, you can call me whatever you'd like. Today I wanted to do show like, uh, it's not like a special video or anything, but I really love, I, I think I said this a lot of times that I do really enjoy, I let me lower the, mus the mu volume there. Uh, I've always enjoyed to tank uh, dungeons and uh, yeah, I've been like a main tank since 2007. And uh, Cataclysm is actually a very fun expansion to level in in dungeons. And uh, today I wanted to show that uh, I've been starting to play my like a warrior uh, as a tank. And I am actually playing a gnome. And sure, it goes against what I've told about like Worgen is like the best tank and everything but I, I always found it fun to be like a small gnome and just running around and being the the dude that everyone is gonna have to hit so um, let me just talk about like why it's so strong and the way that I'm playing it whenever I'm tanking so let's do a slash played so let's see here there we go so currently let me show you like this so currently i play this character for like 10 and a half hour and i am the the last the, the few first like levels until like 15 was kind of slow for me i was just chilling but like once i could tank it was just steam train and as you can see in the video over here when i did uh stockades because okay let me rephrase everything let's start with the build let's actually start from the scratch and then let's discuss in order so i don't like jumping around the way that you play a warrior tank in Cataclysm is just super simple because of Blood and Thunder. Because Blood and Thunder says like this, when you thunderclap a target affected by your rend, you have a 100% chance to aff uh, affect every target with rend. And thunderclap has a six second cooldown. Let me just move this over here, make it a little bit smaller. Um. It is over here. You can see it has six seconds cooldown. And on top of that, it makes them, it's like an AOE damage, which and it also increases the time between attacks from the enemies by 20% for 30 seconds. And damage increased uh, by attack power, which is also extremely nice because since Cataclysm, we got Vengeance now which is whenever we take damage, it says like this, it, uh, each time you take damage, you gain 5% of the damage taken as attack power, up to a maximum of 10% of your health. So whenever you play like this, you want to have as much health as humanly possible. And if you get like off the stamina or anything, equip it because like you're getting, gonna get the like bags and everything from the like what is it it is uh, this one the hatchel of helpful goods so you can see now uh, you can actually see the contains so it's either shoulders uh, two types of shoulder no it's actually four types of types of shoulders but yeah it, it, i'm not sure if that's correct but it contains like a lot of good stuff and the earlier levels you can see here for example i have a like belt i have uh, the a um, necklace and i've gotten gloves in the past and bracers and rings and everything so it's kind of nice to have because the more health you have the more damage you're gonna deal and the more attack power you're gonna uh, you're gonna get because you're taking damage, the more damage you deal, deal pretty much. So I'm, I, I have uh, like full heirloom. I know it's a cloth, but the reason why I bought the cloth is because I can use it on everything. Because I can use it on cloth, uh, on like um, uh, casters, like cloth if I want to level a priest, if I would ever do that. And I, it feels like it's uh, 
very nice and cheap investment to do. Um, obviously, it's not the optimal way, but it's okay. I still had the stamina from it. I missed the strength, but it is what it is. But on the chest, I have 100 health, which is also increasing the damage that I do because of Vengeance. So, and on the cloak, I have actually the tank one because I'm, I'm mainly tank and I can use this one on cloth as well. And I have sh uh, cloth shoulders on in the store. But I am I have these ones, which is a PvP version, I guess. But yeah, but on the cloak, I have 50 armor extra. And then I have the trinkets and I have this one. The I actually prefer to have the battle worn trash a uh, thrash blade because it has a chance uh, it says here chance on hit grants an extra attack on your next swing so and i have a crusader on it which also increases our strength and whenever it procs i'll get i get healed from it and the strength gives me more attack power which basically means more damage and yeah, I, I think we can see that in this run over here. I have like 50% damage, like even more, because yeah, it's insane. It's just fun to have. So, yeah. <clears throat> but let's go back here. Um, we also have the shield slam, and then you have this one, which is increasing our block and everything. But yeah. But after that, I'm actually using with insight. This is up to you, but I expect it because earlier on you did not have uh, cleave. But on level, I think it's like level 24 or 26, you get cleave, which makes me like replace it com uh, like in yeah, completely. I only, only use heroic strike on bosses in dungeons. But other than that, I'm going to show you the macro a little bit later that I use. But other than that, it's just up to you really. Um, I use shield specialization because whenever I block, I get more rage. And then we have this one. Uh, improves your critical strikes and critical block chance by 10% for 10 seconds following a successful parry. So if you can find parry gear or stuff like that, that's awesome. I actually realized that I haven't pulled out my last stance yet. So there we go. There it is. But yeah, and then on level 29, you can learn Warbringer, which really unlocks the fun way to play tank warrior in Cataclysm. Because your charge, intercept, and intervene ability are now usable while in combat in and in any stance. In addition, your intervene ability will remove all in, uh, movement impairing effect. But because of charge is giving you 15 uh, rage and has a 15 second cooldown i use it constantly like this one is supposed to be on cooldown for me whenever i run because even if i have a lot on me usually i can like target something new charge over there so in a sense even if I have a lot of mobs on me at the time, if I charge away, they cannot hit me anymore. And usually, if they're, if they're low on health, they will die on the way there if we have enough AoE. And usually, like, I get killing blows all the freaking time with Victory Rush. Uh, like, on my warrior, so I get the proc of Victory Rush, which basically is a huge heal. It heals me for 20% of my maximum health. So, there you go, another reason why you want to have as much health as possible. You can buy pots, probably, that increases it and stuff like that. But, yeah, I didn't have it because I didn't feel that it was that much of a need. Like, sure, I can increase the damage, but I don't think it's that much. If, if like, the flasks one. Might be mistaken, but, yeah. And, yeah, I haven't bought any glyphs yet. I'm gonna start looking into that. And on level 40, I'm going to learn this one, which is Revenge, which is going to be, like, unlock even more damage. But yeah, so the macros that I actually have used is this one. Um, it says DPS slash tank, but it doesn't, it, 
the name is wrong but on on my abilities you always and I have when I have slash start attack because if you're not attacking you're not generating rage and if you're not generating rage you can't do damage so and I have it on both these abilities which I'm gonna show the keybinds on but the way that I have it you want to have the cleave first because uh, to my understanding when I tried it if I have the charge first and then cleave it wants to spam charge um, because it's gonna be on cooldown but on cleave it's like the other way around for some reason it like it, it, if I have the charge first it, it wants to keep trying to spam charge and not cleave but if you have it this way it's gonna cleave and since the charge doesn't share global cooldown with everything else you can charge it so keep in mind that the way that i play is that if you accidentally target something new that is far away and you sp keep spamming you're gonna charge towards it so keep that in mind but yeah and i have that this one on scroll down on my mouse so like scroll down and then it's the macro and then we have this one so the first thing that you want to do is charge in and i actually have uh well not this one but i i use why the hell is it there there you go usually i sh uh, start with charge if i'm level 29 of course uh, above so i can use it in tank stance but if not i run in make sure that i hit rend and then after i hit rend it's just go time and with the macro uh, with my mouse scroll up and down because this one is just a start attack and a cast cle uh, thunderclap and the show tooltip is just so if I hover over it uh, hover hover over it it will show the tooltip like the information about the spell but basically what I do is if we look at the video over here um, let me start over here so we can see it Basically what I do, this is what I do, I apply Ren, and then I just run, and just cleave. Well, I, I, um, this is before I learned cleave. So at that point I had sh uh, just charge and, and, um, thunderclap. But it's like, all I'm doing is basically applying Ren, and then scrolling. And then I have, because for some reason, victory rush cannot be uh, like macroed like it cannot be inside of a macro because it doesn't work for some reason because I've been googling it and to my knowledge to like all the forums and everything it looks like Blizzard intentionally made it so Victor Rush cannot be in a macro but if you got a way that you can apply it like implement it into a macro please type in the comment below but yeah, basically that what I'm doing. And whenever I learned cleave, I changed this one. I, I added the cleave. So it's not just charge, it's cleave. And yeah, like on single target, I just spam like this pretty much. The Sunder, I apply Randolph, obviously. And then Thunderclap just to reduce damage taken. The, 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 the increasing their time between attack. And then I just spam like this because it doesn't really matter like I'm gonna have is always gonna prioritize Sunder armor and if I have a lot of rage it's gonna spam that one and after that it's gonna be shield slam and if I have more than that it's gonna have the heroic strike so basically that's what you do and yeah make sure to always cast sh uh, battle shout on cooldown if you're low on rage because it has a one minute cooldown and it generates 20 health and 20 rage. So, and it lasts for two minutes. And that is also one ability that I would like to be, uh, to implement into, into a macro because it doesn't really matter if, for me personally, if I would accidentally use it and I'm on 100 rage, it doesn't really matter because yeah, it's so fast anyway. But the way that I'm doing whenever I'm, like leveling in dungeons um i know that a lot of people are like queuing specifics just to get quests done in the dungeons and sure you can do that 
but most likely you're gonna hit them anyway and you might hit you might miss one let's say that you queue and you're never getting uh, let's say uh, I don't know Valen Caverns or something like that it's like the way that I'm playing is that I'm focusing to hit this one wait there we go so the, I'm focusing to hitting this one as as fast as possible so um, like for example <laughs> I, di I did over pull in the video there I was a bit reckless there but I just want to hit it's here so there we dinged and instantly as you're gonna see I already queue up and just looting and just waiting and like a lot of the times I'm like stick around because I'm gonna do this for a while and a lot of people stayed and I even added a like one a paladin which uh, I think he played for me for like uh, over an hour so that was fun and he was from Norway so shout out to him um, he, he said that he wanted to play with me some more but I'm not certain if I'm gonna be in his level bracket and yeah and another we another reason why I personally rather play random dungeon classic is because of the help satchel of helpful goods because you're getting gear from it and if you, even if you don't uh, use it once you're getting up in level you're you're gonna get like one gold each run just because of this plus this one and the loot so maybe like two and a half gold a run it it's not much but it's it, in my opinion it's much while I'm leveling because I've bought dual spec and I still have 29 gold and I have every single spell so train so <laughs> yeah and yeah I don't, I don't I'm not sure if there's anything else here uh, it became a rather long video but it's just I really really enjoy doing this just to make sure to like try to speed as much as possible and oh yeah I forgot to, to tell you that in the video maybe I can show you a later one just real quick I think I have a stocky uh, wait uh, this one right yeah so whenever I did this one this is a graveyard and I just wanna like kill the bosses and just I'm uh, I like let me speed it up there we go there 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 let me start it all over as you can see I'm I'm hugging the middle because I don't want to pull everything back in the back in the days whenever I did this I was a little bit more of a noob I'd say because I wanted to kill everything sure w currently whenever we actually have the the midsummer we have the let me just remove this other one there we go we, like currently we have the midsummer so sure you want to have the ribbon pole which is it, it is 10 percent increased monster killing experience but I feel that if you're trying to hit to hit this one as fast as possible just to kill the last boss to proc it and then re real fast if you're if you're a tank obviously you're gonna get way more experience an hour because once I had like a, a certain speed I was hitting 125 experience an hour 125,000 experience an hour and that was like what was that like four levels an hour maybe even more because it was like 30,000 back then on that experience now now I need 47,000 so even if I would continue this one is, has been dropping a lot but yeah uh, let me see uh, play, play this session and see three hours and 20 minutes is what I've been playing and when I when I started I was level let's see here I was level here right let me see once I kill this one I was level
26. Well, maybe even 25. But yeah, I've been getting a lot of levels in just three hours. So let's do a quick calculation here. What is that? That is, I'm currently at 36 and I was like 26. So like it divided by three point, what was it? Okay, 3.5, let's say that, 0.5, that is, well, two, two and a half, almost three levels an hour. Meh, it wasn't that great, but it, it, in my opinion, it's way faster and way more fun and more engaging than questing. And it might not be the best optimal way to level, but it's just a fun fun way to do it so yeah I highly recommend and remember to uh, stack up the ribbon dance remember to put the fire festival fury on currently because it's midsummer and remember to I need to restock on these ones but the haste the hit and the dodge one from the vendors in your capital city which is just going to increase the speed and everything. And yeah, with that, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. If you're clicking this video over here, you're going to see my reaction to why, uh, like a uh, one of Solheim's videos. But if you like this video, consider subscribing, hit the like, and yeah, I'm going to put the the. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put the macros in the description down below. And click on this video, and I'll see you over there. Bork, bork!